I did warn the room that people may not listen to us until there's loss of life. So I brought five hackers into Fort Meade for the for a two-day summit, trying to get as high and deep as I could to decision makers and my government to warn them that I felt cyber terrorism was the next turn. This isn't about privacy. I love my privacy. I'd like to be alive to enjoy it. It's not just about intellectual property. It's about when you connect things to the internet, people can die. So after those two days of trying to warn people, I realized the cavalry isn't coming. Um, no one's gonna save us. I'm Josh Corman. I'm the founder of IamTheCavalry.org. Saying the cavalry isn't coming, no one's gonna save us was sobering, but it was incomplete. That night when we got out of there, I got back to my car, my cell phone, and I had a dozen voice messages, uh, all saying, I'm so sorry, Josh. Uh, my mother had had a stroke um, a couple weeks prior, and we thought it was just gonna affect her speech, but we later learned it was gonna take her life. And a couple weeks later, as we started to hospice her, uh, she wanted to go say goodbye to her church one last time. And with really bad luck, uh, it happened to be the Sandy Hook shooting that weekend. And every parent, every child was scared and confused. So instead of saying goodbye to her friends, her preacher asked for two hours straight, why is there evil in the world? Why is there evil in the world? And it really just didn't sit right with me as I looked at my mom, as I looked at my daughters. It was just a, a hard time. A couple months later after she passed, uh, as her eldest, I gave a, a eulogy. And uh, getting into that church again, I didn't want to feel angry at my mom's funeral, but something as I tried to process that anger clicked in my head. I didn't like the question of why is there evil in the world? And when I got up to speak, I said, you know, this has really bothered me, but I think I figured out why. My mom got to be my seventh grade science teacher. And of the many, many things I learned from her, uh, I learned that darkness is not a thing. It's an absence of light. And cold is not a thing. It's an absence of heat. So maybe it's not the question of why is there evil in the world, but maybe it's the absence of good. So I asked the room, what's the absence of, of Marie, my mom? And I said, we don't get to find out because it, now it falls to us to do what she was doing. So if something's missing in the world, it falls to us to put it there. And that's when it clicked for me, as if the cavalry isn't coming, We, we have a job to do. What am I gonna do? What are you gonna do? We spread my mom's ashes here at this lighthouse. So when I come to talk to my mom, I talk to, to this beacon that warns of the promise of safe harbor and the perils of the rocks below. And with so many harms manifest, threats to our safety, our values, our ways of life, as the world is depending on that connected technology, they are depending on you. And boy, does the world need you now more than ever. I'm a philosopher who ended up in the hacker community. I wanted to fight evil, uh, make things right, make the world a safer place. Uh, that's not usually how people enter the hacker community. You know, it starts as a hobby, but it becomes a profession when you're not looking. The world and policymakers and those that we wish to influence, they've assumed that hacking equals criminal. So we had to kind of take the name back. Hacking is magic. It's just a power that can be used for good or for ill. For myself, I'm a protector first and foremost. I wake up every day saying, how do I save lives through security research? When I saw the rise of hacktivism and anonymous, I knew this was significant and substantive. They revealed to the world that hacking is easy and our over-dependence on undependable things, we're creating infinite opportunity and infinite attack surface. And all we really needed was somebody willing and able to do things that could cost lives. A kid from Anonymous, from Team Poison, a Birmingham, UK honor student, he got arrested for hacking Tony Blair's website and while in prison radicalized and joined ISIS. 
When he got out, he moved to Raqqa, Assyria, where he founded the Cyber Caliphate. It was my worst nightmare come true. He was using his social media and hacking skills to attract and recruit. We later came to learn about that as a public because he was killed with a drone strike. His name was Trick. His real name was Junaid Hussein. I mean, that should scare people. In a world of seven billion people, it doesn't matter what most would do, it matters what one can do. It was a sobering moment that made me realize someone has to do something. It just didn't occur to me what yet. He found that he could empty a three-hour dose in 30 seconds into a patient. They had to divert ambulances, cancel surgeries, and move critical care patients from one hospital to another. The predators are here, and things are on fire everywhere. Just because it's scary doesn't mean it isn't true.